Really, the only hard part about finding extreme values is finding the critical numbers. So let's just focus on that. We'll go through three problems where we are asked to find the critical numbers of the function. As a quick recap, a critical number of a function is a point C where the function is defined and where the derivative is either zero or doesn't exist. We would call C the critical number and the actual point C f of C could be called the critical point, although I do think some textbooks use critical number and critical point kinda interchangeably. Links in the description to some of my relevant lessons introducing critical numbers and on finding extreme values and all that. Let's get into the exercises. Problem one, we're looking for the critical numbers of f of x equals x cubed minus 3x squared. To begin, we of course take the derivative, and we need to find where the derivative is zero or undefined. To find the derivative, we just use the the power rule, that gives us 3x squared minus 6x. In this case, there are no domain issues. The derivative is just a polynomial, it's defined everywhere, so we can move on to finding where the derivative is 0. We're trying to solve now f prime of x equals 0. f prime, of course, is 3x squared minus 6x, so we're solving 3x squared minus 6x equals 0. On the left side, we just need to factor. We factor out an x, and we get that x times 3x minus 6 equals 0, and then we just apply the zero product property. Either x equals 0, or 3x minus 6 equals 0, in which case x would have to equal 2. And so we get these two values of x that make the derivative 0. The function f of x is defined at both of these x values, so these are the two critical numbers of the function. So those are the critical numbers. If we were looking for the full critical points, then we would just plug these into the function. So for example, one critical point, well, we would plug in f of 0, and find that that is zero. So one of the critical points is just zero, zero. The other critical point we would find by plugging in the other critical number, plug in two. That would be two cubed, which is eight, minus three times two squared. So eight minus 12, which is negative four. So the other critical point would be two, negative four. For the rest of the problems though, we're just gonna find the critical numbers. Problem two, we're looking for the critical numbers of g of t equals t times the square root of four minus t, with the domain restriction that t is less than three. Now notice this is just a forced domain restriction. It's not necessary as a result of the function like t equaling four or three and a half is no problem. This function would be defined, but there is just this extra restriction that t is less than three. Sometimes you have to deal with these unnecessary domain restrictions, which is what we have here. So any potential critical number, we're gonna need to take extra care to make sure that it's in the domain of our function. Regardless, we begin by finding the derivative, g prime. To do this, we need the product rule. We could call t u and the square root of 4 minus t, we could call that v. And so the product rule is u prime v plus v prime u. u prime is just 1, and then we multiply that by v, which gives us this, the square root of 4 minus t, which we can write as 4 minus t to the power of 1 half. And then we need to add v prime times u. V, of course, is four minus t to the one half. So the derivative of that is going to be one half times four minus t to the negative half, but then we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. There's some chain rule going on here. Now the derivative of the inside is just negative one, and so we get a negative out there. So this here is v prime, and then we need to multiply that by u, which of course is just t. And then we want to simplify this. The only simplification we can really do is turning this negative exponent into a positive by moving this to the denominator, and then I'll rewrite the rational exponents as radicals, and that gets us here. So this is g prime. We had to use the product rule and the chain rule, and of course we had to rewrite the root as an exponent of one half, just to help us take the derivative. Now that we've got the derivative, we need to ask where is this derivative undefined? Well, for starters, we can't take the square root of a negative. So if t is ever greater than four, 
Well, the derivative will be undefined there because four minus something greater than four is a negative. So certainly this derivative will be undefined when t is greater than four. There's nothing wrong with taking the square root of zero. So t equals four wouldn't be a problem for the square root, but it is a problem over here because the square root of four minus four is zero and this one is in the denominator so that would be a problem so we can't have t greater than four because that would be the square root of a negative and we can't have t equals four because that would be a division by zero however neither of these points where the derivative is undefined are in the domain of the function the domain of the function is t is less than three so the problems we found t greater than four and t equals four those are both outside of the domain, so neither of them are actually critical numbers of the function. Remember, when you're looking for where the derivative is undefined, you need to check the operations that have domain issues, like square roots, division, natural logs, for example. You can only take the natural log of positive numbers, stuff like that. So when we do that, this is what we find. But again, it turns out these are all outside of the domain, so there are no critical numbers. Thus, we're moving on to setting the derivative equal to zero so set g prime of t equal to zero and we've got to solve this here's that equation g prime on the left equals zero on the right now we'll just add this t over two root four minus t to both sides and that gets us here you may be tempted to square both sides of the equation to get rid of the square roots but since we have this two root four minus t in the denominator we can actually multiply both sides by that and that's going to clean up this square root on the left. So now we have 2 times 4 minus t because square root 4 minus t times square root 4 minus t is just 4 minus t. We multiplied by this on both sides. So just 2 times 4 minus t equals just t now on the right side of the equation. Then distributing the 2 gives us 8 minus 2t. Subtracting this t from both sides turns that into 8 minus 3t equals 0. Add 3t to both sides and divide by 3, and we find that t is equal to 8 thirds. So this is the one critical number of the function. It is in the domain because 8 thirds, of course, is less than 3. It's all that pre-calc and algebra that can make finding critical numbers difficult. And here's some more for you. Trigonometry. Problem 3. Find the critical numbers of f of theta equals 2 secant theta plus tan theta, where theta is between 0 and 2 pi, so a full period of sine and cosine. We'll begin, of course, by taking the derivatives. So you got to know your trig derivatives. The derivative of secant is secant tangent, so the derivative of of this is just 2 secant tangent. And the derivative of tangent is secant squared. So we just have 2 secant tangent plus secant squared. Now we have to ask, where is this derivative undefined? And to answer that question, we need to understand what secant and tangent are in terms of sines and cosines. Secant is 1 over cosine. Tangent is sine over cosine. So both of these functions, and thus the derivative, will be undefined when cosine is zero. When cosine is zero, secant, tangent, and thus the derivative will all be undefined. Now where is cosine zero? Well, infinitely many places, but as far as our interval goes between zero and two pi, cosine is equal to zero when theta is pi over two and three pi over two. That's because on the unit circle, cosine is the x coordinate, x is zero on the y axis. To get to the y axis, you need a rotation of pi over two or a rotation of three pi over two. So are these critical numbers? Well, they make the derivative undefined, but the whole reason they make the derivative undefined is because they make secant and tangent undefined. Secant and tangent are also in the original function. So the original function is also undefined at these theta values. Thus, they are not critical numbers. Remember, the function needs to be defined at these numbers in order for them to be critical numbers. So we can move on to setting the derivative equal to zero and solving that. So that gets us here. The derivative is on the left, two secant tangent plus secant squared equals zero. 
we'll subtract secant squared from both sides of the equation. That gives us two secant tangent equals negative secant squared theta. We can then divide both sides of the equation by secant since secant is never zero. So that's going to get rid of the secant on the left and the secant squared on the right will just become a single factor of secant. So we have two tangent theta equals negative secant theta. We'll rewrite these in terms of sines and cosines to help finish the solving. Tangent is sine over cosine, so we have two sine over cosine on the left, and secant is one over cosine, so we have negative one over cosine on the right. Now we can multiply both sides by cosine to get rid of those denominators, and that leaves us with two sine theta equals negative one. Dividing both sides by two, we find that sine theta equals negative half, and between zero and two pi, the theta values that make this equation true, if you remember your unit circle, are 11 pi over six and seven pi over six. The original function is defined at both of these values, so those are the critical numbers of the function. So those are a few examples of finding critical numbers of functions. As you can see, the domain issues can be a little bit tricky. So can the algebra at times, but the general process is pretty straightforward. Take the derivative of your function, find where it's undefined, and then set it equal to zero and solve that equation. And all the points that you find in this process where the derivative is undefined and where the derivative is equal to zero, take out the ones that aren't in the domain of the original function and what remains, the points that are in the domain and either make the derivative undefined or make the derivative zero, those are the critical numbers. If you plug them in and get the y values too, then you can have the critical points. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and if you find these calculus videos helpful, please consider supporting Wrath of Math on Patreon. Link in the description, it's a huge help. Thanks for watching. I'm a secular anesthetic for my own